everybody, this is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation and the glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. First time that I felt the glory of God come on me was when um, I was at a small church in Arkansas at a prayer meeting and um, a gentleman had called out and said, you daughter, the Lord knows exactly what the enemy has stolen from you and you're going to get double for your trouble. And he called me up front and laid hands on me and when he laid hands on me, I went under the spirit for about an hour. I was laying on the ground and I was fighting it. But at the same time that I was trying to open my eyes, he was telling me, be still child. And he just did a, he did a whole operation on my heart, on everything. And that was the first time that I actually felt him touch me and his glory just all over me and all over the situations that I was dealing with at the time. Come on, I just I just love the way that the Holy Spirit, uh, that's how he opened himself up to you as freedom. Yes. That's powerful. And uh, a lot of people are asking questions like, is there anything, were you seeking the Lord? Were you hungry? Were you praying? I'm just sh- showing people like, what can they do to position them to experience the presence of God? Well, I was seeking him not not the way that I seek him today, but I was seeking him for help and answers in the situations that I was going through. Come on. I was I was going through a custody battle at the time and um, he had just, he when the, the guy that was leading the prayer opened up and he just goes, the Lord knows everything that was stolen from you. And I was just shocked because, you know, uh, the right. enemy stole my my marriage he stole my children he stole everything i had and um when he called that out and then he said that the lord was going to give me double for my trouble it was that right there was the answer that that i was seeking him for lord am i always going to be in this position am i always going to feel defeated like this and it wasn't it was that he was he was winning the war he was after it he the victory was his and he was going to take it and not only take it back for me he was going to give me double for my trouble for what i went through for what the enemy tried to use for my for harm he was going to turn around and use for good I see so many people saying, yes, yes, good stuff. Amen. So what would you say to somebody that's maybe walking through a similar season um, that you, when you were, what's a word of wisdom that you would give the people that are walking through the same season? When you Lord sees started? everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. He sees a- absolutely everything that's going on. Do not think that you're alone. In, in this battle that you're fighting right now. Do not feel like you're standing there crying out and he you might not hear him right this second, but he's working behind the scenes. He's always working. He is your heavenly father. He's he's He sees all, he knows all, and he's working everything for your good. Whether you feel like it's good right now, it's gonna be good in the future. Come on. Come on. So it's just that attitude of trust. It unlocks yeah. revelation. That's what I love about deliverance and I love about the glory. You know, it's it unlocks the revelation of freedom of God as the restorer. And who is the originator of bad things? Let's just talk about that for a minute. I feel like I can go there. It's good God, bad devil. Yes. That's theology. Good Period. God. Bad devil, period. So so what could you say? Did you ever have to fight through like who was the originator of what you were going on in your life, like at the beginning of your trials? 
Oh, at the beginning of my trials, I was definitely shaking my fist at God. I was definitely confused and I felt, you know, how can you say that you love me? Your word says you love me, but yet I'm going through all these things. I did not know at the time that he allows these things to happen sometimes to us to test us and see if we are going to, to fully rely on him or are we going to quick cave under pressure? And, and so that's far to no more, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's what I definitely, when he was telling me to do things, mm-hmm. I was angry at him because I thought my flesh thought this is not good. This is, this is not from God, mm-hmm. but I didn't see the bigger picture. We only see what's right in front of us. We don't see down the road a few years when he used yeah. everything that the enemy was trying to throw at us for good. Yeah, I love that too. And and what you're describing a lot of is what I call like generational curses. Like things are being s- stolen from us and hit until we discover that we have the power through Jesus's blood to evict all the generational curses and ask for revelation. And I have people asking me all the time, how do I know what generational curses, like, what do I break? And same answer. Like, I know that this is something you do regularly. You get on your face before the Lord and you ask, <laughs> share yeah. a little bit about that. I know I'm going off on a side trail here, but I feel like it's really just speaking to people tonight. Um, so generational curses, I know a lot, you'll hear a lot of people say that generational curses are, um, they're just automatically gone when you accept yeah. Jesus. Correct. That is not the truth. We'll say that that. Is not. And you will go through until we go home to be with the Lord. You're going to be breaking generational stuff off. You're going to, something else is going to come up and you're going to have to break it off, but you have to bring it before the Lord. Like something that I was dealing with this past week. Mm -hmm. Um, I have prayed for, for my family when, and when I say like my family, I think of just my, my mother's side of the family, Uh, my biological father was not in my life. So I didn't ever think about his side of the family. Well, the Lord, um, I had an encounter with the enemy this week and he, the Lord, when I started seeking the Lord about it, he said, your father's side. And it was just a whole other side that I've had to spend since what Monday or Tuesday of last week, breaking it off. Come on. And deliverance makes way for the glory. Yes. Yes. That's why with with deliverance comes freedom. You can, you will live in your total freedom that the Lord has for you. Everything he talks about freedom in his word, that is on the other side of deliverance. That's on the other side of those strong, once that strongholds broken, it's you there's your freedom it will no longer bother you it will no longer hinder you and hold you down when you get on the other side of deliverance we have a lot of people saying um you start to see patterns yeah i agree with that definitely you start to see patterns when there's generational curses or repeated family issues from one side that keeps going down keeps going down and uh let's just talk about because i know you're a woman of the word Let's talk about, I know I can just go here with you. What would you say in in your revelation of just studying God's word and getting the truth down deep in your roots? Would you say there's just an area of deliverance that just comes from renewing your mind and and just speak speak whatever direction you want to go with that? Oh, yes. When I started digging into um, digging into his word and renewing my mind, it took me from because the best thing that I can think of is, is about um, the lies that the enemy tries to tell us shame hung over me Come for on. years and years and years. I just felt shameful about the, my past, about what I had gone through, about what I had done to people. And so the shame had just hung over me and that's where the enemy wants to keep us. But when I started to read God's word, Come I started on. to see this love, this, this, pattern of love Mm -hmm. from my father who told me that he knew me before he put me in my mother's womb, that Mm -hmm. I was loved and cherished and, and that I'm, Mm -hmm. I am confident in him and I'm bold and just all these things that he created me to be. So renewing your mind is such a big thing in his word, but that's the the number one is Mm -hmm. finding out 
who you are in Christ and then finding out about Christ, finding out about who he is and what he did for you, what he came here to do and your freedom in that. And when you see your freedom, then you recognize your authority. Come on. I love that. And it's the process of authority. You know, it's everybody says it's instant, but it's really a process because what you get set free from, you can set others from. Don't you just love that about Jesus? And um, man, I just, I just feel the glory really heavy. I know I've been slurring a little bit, (laughs) Lord, we just released the presence of everybody watching right now. Let's just stop and minister for a minute and then we'll dive right back in. I just want to release the glory. We do it together in unity. Just let it wash over us. Lord, and just, just even I've seen people delivered in the glory. I've seen inner healing take place in the glory. And before we got on the broadcast, um, me and Joanne had some words of knowledge and I just wanted to, to just come against a spirit of suicide. If you're just having thoughts, um, just hit your head during the holiday season. I know it's, it's a hard time for people. Sometimes they've got family that that's not close by or family that they're no longer Lord. We just come together in unity Lord. And if there's any generational curses of suicide and bloodlines, we just repent. We cut the cord of that iniquity. We just command every spirit of suicide off your mind, off your thoughts. You will live and not die. And you will declare the works of the Lord. Lord, I just declare over those people that even had thoughts of suicide. Right now, they're taking every thought captive. Their mind is the mind of Christ. And that you set them in families, Lord, your word. I decree and declare, whoa, that you set them in families, that you set the people that are lonely in families right now. Right now, that you surround them, the people that love them. Oh, I just see somebody on here. You just, you already had made plans. You'd already made plans for suicide and Lord's just breaking that off of you right now. He's just breaking breaking off. But the the restoration, entire family restoration, relationship restoration is coming. Don't give up. It's right around the corner. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm just making sure he's got nothing else to, to pray through that. Yeah, we just break any any generational curse of any estrangement on the family. I see like entanglement and webs. We call in the pro, the prodigal son and daughter. And I hear the Lord just saying that they're in my hands. They're in my hands. Just trust me. Just trust me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And just why I just declare that grief and sorrow to be washed away off of you right now. Whoa. All the grief and sorrow, all the grief and sorrow. Lord, I just curse the roots of any trauma or stress that could, that could lead to thoughts of suicide. We just curse it at its root. We command it off its cellular memory. We just release the joy of the Lord to breathe. I just feel the breath of the wind of the Holy Spirit coming around you as you, as you listen to this broadcast or you're under the sound of my voice. If you don't want to say it live, you can message me afterwards. Just, just let the Holy Spirit breathe on you right now. He's just touching your heart. He's just renewing you. You're just, I just see the fire, like a deliverance fire coming over you. Well, we just released that deliverance fire to set you free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. We just declare more deliverance to you right now. I just see the the glory ministering to you. Well, we declare it's a new season of restoration, like Joanne said. Woo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, Joanne, do you have any more words? Ooh. Just what I see is that they're on the, they're on the brink of giving up. They haven't planned. They're on the brink of giving up, but right on the other side Mm -hmm. is restoration. Come on. There's a restoration and I'm seeing family that there's several individuals that, but it's right on the other side of that. So do not give up. The enemy's trying to push you and make you give up. Do not give up because it is right there. Come on. (laughs) And we just declare joy. Joy, joy, joy. When you feel like giving up, just press into the Lord. Press into the Lord. Grab hold of some scriptures. Sometimes when you decree it out of your own mouth, it'll build your faith. So and just hold on to his promise of restoration. That is a promise to you. He will restore your family. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So talk about after that time where, where Holy Spirit set you free and 
you um, start experiencing more and more freedom with him. How did you cultivate your relationship in the presence of God after that initial, um, I guess you could say, experience with his presence? Well, I started spending my days um, Mm -hmm. just sitting and reading his word, sitting, listening to worship music, sitting, watching TV sermons, um, listening to podcasts. I just started um, surrounding myself with nothing but him and and his word. And uh, I got rid of all of the outside stuff, no outside music, no outside television, just the Lord. And that's when it, everything started to open up and, and I really started to hear his voice in not just that correcting nudge. It was more of, okay, Joanna, this is, this is the way that I want you to go. This is what I want you to do. Come on. So it's just an intimate relationship. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it was just spending time with him and just taking the world out. There's so much noise that Satan tries to put around us with whether it be music, people, TV, just life. He tries to surround us with this. So that way we can't hear our father. And so it takes getting rid of that stuff whether you feel convicted to get rid of it for a short period of time or a long period of time. And when you do that, it gives your father a chance to come in and really create that relationship with you and build. And that's what he's after. He wants to talk to his children. Come on. That's what so many people understand. You know, we are daughters and sons before any office or any gifting. We are daughters and sons. And the more that you just set as a daughter, you go from deliverance to transformation. <laughs> yeah, That's what I love about the Holy Spirit because, you know, I am a deliverance minister. I've seen other deliverance ministers. I love de- deliverance ministers. But some of the things that, you know, you have to learn to sit in his presence and be transformed and be delivered by the Holy Spirit and some of the most powerful deliverances that I've had in my life have been just me and the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that sounds like it's been that way for you too. So yeah. I think you're uh, Lord show me you're like, you're like a garter of the secret place. That's so yeah. cool. That <laughs> you're like, nobody's messing with my secret place. I could just see that in the spirit. That's so cool. And, and if you're on here and um, you're like seeing in the spirit, what are you talking about? That we have access as Jesus Christ is our door. We have access to seeing with the eyes of our heart, our spiritual senses. You know, we have spiritual senses the same as we have five natural senses. And I just want to share, too, if you're on here and you haven't made Jesus Christ your personal savior and you're wondering, like, what is this glory? What is deliverance? Like, what are y'all talking about? Just say, Jesus, come into to my heart. I believe you died on the cross for me. That you, that you just want, I want to know you just cry out to know him. Just say, make yourself real to me. Come into my heart. Show me your presence. Deliver me. Just give God an invitation and he will meet you. Just like when Joanne was hungry, he will meet you where you're at and he will respond to your hunger and just say, make yourself real to me. Just, just keep crying out for him. You died on the cross. You were resurrected. You were going to come into my life. Just believe it. God's going to come into your life and he's going to encounter you. There's so much um, that has to do with experiencing God, just experiencing God. Cause your story, I could just hear that experience changed you forever. It was a transformation and there's something, there's something so special about like, nobody could take that from you. No. And it was actually, as I was under the spirit, uh, somebody had, uh, prophesied to my husband that Mm -hmm. our households, our household was getting ready to be flipped upside down, that the woman that was coming up, (laughs) was not the same woman that had, that had went down. Come on. So, that's and that's, good. that's the way it's been. And we, we didn't know what to think at the time. We're like, I'm going to be different. Okay. I'm not going to be lukewarm. <laughs> it's really good, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what I thought, yeah, little did on. I know what he had plans for. Come on. And, and how much faith in the process that I could just see that you, the Lord showed me that you really just had a faith for the process. So I just want you to talk about that, whatever way you feel led, like some people hate process, but that's just part of the journey. So wherever you feel like going with that, 
I can feel their like resistance to some processes because it's it's dying to the flesh. You know, it's that transformation in Christ. It is. It's processes is, is not fun. <laughs> was, we like the word suddenly in the Bible, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's long and slow. And it, I mean, he took me through disconnecting me from everyone but my husband. Wow. I mean, childhood relationships, uh, someone that I was friends with for 25 years wow. was no longer allowed yeah. to be my friend. And that was probably the hardest thing is finally, cause it's still like, okay, Lord, I'm not going to talk to them every day. I'm just going <laughs> to talk to them every other day. And then it goes, <laughs> and then you start feeling the conviction of that. And it's like, okay, never mind. I'm going to talk to them once a week. And it's like, the Lord is like, if you don't cut it, I will. And so then I'm like, all right, I can't talk to you anymore. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it's so hard because we're doing something you're in a process for God. Come on. People on the outside are not going to understand that. No. They're not going to, they are not going to understand because we are all called to a level of sanctification. Your process is going to bring you to that and it's not going to be fun. He took away friends. He disconnected me from family for a really long time. He <laughs> took away, I make them sound horrible, but it's all been there such a hidden season. Me. There is a hidden season where a lot of stuff it is room. So that's what you're, it seems like. But it was no about. music, no music other than worship music, uh, no TV in my house. Like we had a TV. It just wasn't hooked up to anything. No. No. Um, really careful on who we surrounded ourselves with at church. Every time the doors opened up, just hungry for him and hungry for who he was building me up to be. Yeah. And once I went through that, that long season and you, I felt alone. I felt so alone because all I had was my husband and God, but he does that to make us rely on him. Like those are our two important people to, that we need to, that we need to go to. We need to go to, to our father before we go to anybody. Yeah. Come on. So, We're better wives when we go to the father first, right? <laughs> yes. Let's just be real on here. Yeah. Amen. Yes. But, um, by the time I was at the end of that preparation process, I felt like a two liter bottle of Coke being shaken, ready to explode because he just builds your gifts and builds and just the anointing on you. The more you seek the anointing, the more the anointing is going to build in you. And then it's like, you're standing there just wait. I just felt like a little kid, like, okay, is it got the morning it yet? <laughs> but I felt that like first it's love. Yeah. You're describing that first love. And I know everybody's like seasons are different and growth patterns yeah. and their convictions are different, but this is just the process that God took you through because he knew yeah. where he wanted you at this time and season. Yeah. So you, you're just grew in the secret place and you allowed God to unveil himself to you layer upon layer, and you're still going after deliverance. And that's one of the misconceptions about deliverance. I have, you, you will laugh. I have heard this over and over. People are, are, are thinking that deliverance is a one-time thing. Mm-hmm. And I have, con- I've had people come to me with that. So I just like to explain that up front. It's not a one-time thing, you know, just like what you're describing, you're now unlocking stuff in your bloodline. And I know there are people that got set free of everything at one time, but that is not usually the norm. I can name like five people that that's happened to. Other people have had to plow through and people say, well, how can curses be real? And I say, well, how come people are still sick? It's just appropriating the blood. You have to apply it. And there's certain things you have to get out of your bloodline to protect the rest of the generations behind you. Yes. So I know that's one of the things you're big on because I can just feel it as legacy. Yes. And and I think us as mothers that we just like to plow and plow and plow, you know, to to switch things um, in the spirit realm for like our grandkids. I know that's my biggest heart for my children. And I know yours, too. Um, we have a question. Do you have any insight to being called to the lifestyle, separating yourself from word through music, TV, et cetera, when your husband is not on the same page? I would say follow your conviction. What would you say, Joanna? So everybody's different. Like some people don't need that. 
they're just not that at that place in their life and they don't feel convicted. And then some people, like you said, said, Joanne, that is absolutely what Holy Spirit told you to do. Yeah. There's different timings for everyone. Your husband's time might not be Come when on. your time is, but you still need to, to obey the Lord. If he's telling you to disconnect from those things, then, then disconnect from them. But we, when you, when you, are obedient to disconnecting from them. It begins that you just, Mm -hmm. you can be in the same room as it. You're just not sitting there. Like I know my, my older daughters are mom, watch a movie with me, watch a movie with me, (laughs) honey. I, I can sit here, but I can't watch it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be doing something else. I'll read on, but I'm still spending that time. So it's, so you can still spend that time with a person and but you can make for you your car radio station switch to something else yeah you're when you're not you know because husbands and wives aren't normally together all day long so it's you can do those things during the day and then it slowly he will start seeing the changes in you and it'll start making him question what he's doing yeah come on and and i just know that um the Holy spirit draws you and it's like a woo. You have a a chance to respond or not respond. Yes. You know, and, and he gives us a choice, you know, he's a gentleman. I like to describe Holy spirit as a gentleman, you know, come away with me is his invitation, but it's learning to recognize those invitations and saying, okay, Holy spirit, (laughs) this is your invitation. What do you want me to do in this time and season? Like Joanne said, and, um, I just want to unlock a word of knowledge too, before I forget, um, before we came on, there was a word of knowledge for, um, either breast cancer or cancer in the lymph nodes. So if you're on here, just type yes. Or if that's somebody, you know, um, they could be on the rebroadcast. They could be, um, playing the podcast, but I just like to pray if you're on here live now, just thank you. Cause I just feel his presence really heavy. Someone let us stop and just press in for a second. Yeah, you have to have to just cultivate. I love how Joanne, how you've just cultivated, you know, you just cultivated his presence. And that's why I just believe cultivation brings transformation, which switches the bloodline. <laughs> it's just, it's just the way that God seen he's worked in, in my life. And then I'm starting to see the pattern of, of how he's just breaking through bloodlines in this season. All right. I don't see any text response to that word, but I still want to pray for it. So, Lord, I just curse any cancer right now. I just curse any spirits of death or any generational curses of cancer. We just repent. We cut the cord of that iniquity. We just command all cancer, all prion cells off the body right now. In the name of Jesus, we just command your lymph nodes to be alive in Christ right now. We just command all prions off the cellular memory right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you have any words you want to release, Chan? Just want to make sure I honor you and see if you have anything. Thank you, Lord. So the, the Lord's been giving me the lukewarm people, people that are being lukewarm for him. He wants you to run to him. That now is not the time to be lukewarm. Run it's after him hunger. and it's seek released. him. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what of this world needs to go. Let it go. Because that's this world is is a short period of time compared to eternity. It's like Esther when she bathed in the oil. I always think about Esther. You know, she just bathed in the Lord's presence. She wanted to be in in the Lord's presence, and she just that was like the the set apart. Like yes, you were describing like the set apart, like the the fire in your bones. Like <laughs> you just get that fire. It's just the way it goes, you know, and I just feel the glory so heavy. So I just want to release his presence again and just see if anybody needs a creative miracle on here and just call out some creative miracles. Ooh, it's just so thick. If you're feeling his presence, just type in. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me know guys know what, what your needs are tonight. 
I just don't want to get off of here and somebody not go with prayer, not go with um, unlocking. And I'm going to go into interviewing Joanne in just a second. I just want to honor the thick glory that I feel. So, Lord, I just ask that spines are being healed right now. I just command new discs, new vertebrae right now, just new spines. I command creative order right now. Holy Ghost chiropractic adjustment. I see knees being healed right now. If you need a new knee. I see tendinitis and arthritis leaving right now in the name of Jesus. I actually see gum disease being healed. We just command any gum disease right now to be healed in the name of Jesus. Um, somebody's typing on here. Uh, they need a creative miracle in their daughter's brain. I'm going to pray right now, but I also want to challenge you to be on here next week. We are doing a special glory stories for creative miracles for brains next week. And we're actually going to have an exciting guest on here sharing testimony about brains. So Lord, we just command a new brain from heaven for Gabby right now. Oh, we just thank you, Lord, that you've given her the mind of Christ. We speak life and health to every neuron in her brain right now. We just declare, Lord, there's no shortage in heaven. We just decree that creative miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anything, Joanne? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. New knee cartilage. So just receive well, that new knee that I've called out. Ella, right now, we just declare new knee cartilage, create a miracle, just release. We're just releasing that healing anointing together in unity. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Joanne, the Lord showed me you have a word of knowledge for an internal healing. So just whatever he, he leads on you, I just feel it really deep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, keep prowling, Carrie. Carrie, keep, we'll just declare, um, Carrie, type in your son's name again. We just declare that prodigal son home, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's heart valves opening up that were clogged. Mm -hmm. Come it's on. I'm getting the heart is, is pumping fuller. Thank you, Lord. For any deaf and dumb spirit, we just command that off right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Paul, we just pray for Paul, Lord. We just declare revelation and encounters in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, Lord, for a hedge of protection around Paul right now. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's share a little bit about your book, Joanne, as we flow in and out of the glory. I really feel um, there's some people on here that need to get your book. So just whatever you feel like the Holy Spirit's leading you to share. Well, my book is really about when um, just it's called Where God Met Me, Redeemed from a Path of Failure. How mm -hmm. I was, I did not come from, um, <clears throat> come from a, uh, a family that was, that was on the path to follow Jesus. I'm reading this right now with Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How to be healed. Having gum surgery, a battle with jaw tumor. Okay. That whole, anybody who's, pre who's asking for a head thing, anything to be with the head. Yeah. Come on. Anywhere. My ears are, my ears are burning. Yeah, my just ears are new, burning new like I have. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for new eardrums. Just release their eardrums. I release healing right now in the ears. Restored hearing. Oh. Everything cleared now in the name of Jesus. And you, if you feel something going on, test it. Like we want to know. If you feel a fire, you feel Holy Spirit touching. If your hearing increases. And or we just curse the root of any of that um, tumor in that jaw right now. We would just release the healing power of God. And we command it to shrivel up right now in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, Lord, that that tumor will dissolve all the way, all the way. We just command complete healing. We just even command, I see your jaw being out of alignment. We just command that jaw to be in alignment right now in the name of Jesus. And just release your fire. 
fire, fire of the Holy Spirit. Your healing fire, healing virtue over your mouth right now. I just curse the root of trauma. See some kind of trauma done to your mouth. I just curse the root of that trauma. Command it off the cellular memory. Paula, you when you take your husband's ears, just hold his ear, and it's like through what we're saying, and your hands on his ears is going to release that hearing and restore it. That's right, Kenneth, the frequency of God. Some people describe the glory as frequency. It's like vibrations. And that's just because everything has vibrations. <laughs> if you study scientifically, our DNA has vibrations. So yeah, this type of something's going on and you feel, as Joanne gets ready to talk about her book again, if you feel the Lord is touching you or you're experiencing a miracle or you're experiencing a breakthrough, just, just go ahead and share. Thank you, Lord. Well, my family for five generations back were Jehovah Witnesses mm. on my mother's side. And that put a lot of stuff over my family that should not ever have been there, but it was there. And it had generations of um, <clears throat> generations of uh, molestation ran through my family, generations of m- marrying early, seeking love from men who we had no business being with ran in my family. And the Lord just completely, he met me on that path that I was on and just that purity flopped me over (laughs) just, Hey, Mm -hmm. this is, this is not the way that I want you. Everything that, that the enemy threw up from my past generations, um, that tried to be a fork in the road for me, like, Hey, Mm -hmm here, this will stop her for a couple more years. Hey, this will, this will stop her for a couple more. And when the Lord finally let me, like the veil was lifted and I was able to see who I was Mm -hmm. in him. It completely changed my path. Just in, he just restored everything down to my family's restored my relationship with my children, my, um, just any anybody who I've crossed paths with, it's been either they were not of God, and so they were completely taken out, or if they were from Him, the re- the relationship has been restored. Amen. Amen. So, um, some of your book that you wrote about, did you write about that process in your book, or yes? Okay. So I know um, at one point you have a really powerful breaker for abandonment. So let's just talk about that. And that way you could pray any curses of abandonment off people here. Cause that's a huge one. That, yeah. that is a it's huge one that we don't even know that we have. Come on, come on. A lot of people have no idea that that's what's controlling them. Like they're having cycles because of abandonment or fear of abandonment or sicknesses because of abandonment or sicknesses because of rejection, you know, whatever it is, um, describe maybe I I think the Lord's going to show me that like some people will get revelation as you describe, um, the way you felt abandoned. You don't have to go like in great detail, but how you, how it physically made you feel. Um, I held on to, uh, I think anger was the biggest thing. It was this deep root of anger that I had no idea where it was coming from. I was so easily angered at something that now I, I just brush off. Like yeah. that's, that's nothing. <laughs> but before it would, I would, it would literally enrage me. I would get so angry. And so I then had to seek out what, what, what was causing this Lord? Like, I don't want to be angry anymore. And he didn't respond to me immediately. Like sometimes <laughs> he, doesn't. he, he, he wants to see if you're going to keep seeking him or did you just seek him that one time? Come on. But, um, I was in a class and I was standing there and just worshiping and the Lord goes, give it to me, Joanna. And I go, come on. What? <laughs> and he goes, give me the abandonment. And I was like, what abandonment? And he's like, 
the root of abandonment. And I'm like, then I'm just like, take it, Lord. I'm done. I don't want anything that you, that you want. I don't want it. Like if you, if you want to take it from me, I don't want it. Like just take it. And so I literally felt that root come out from the inside of me up through my chest and leave. And I had such a peace and I was just, I was bawling and just so thankful. But that root came from my abandon. It was abandonment from my father. Come he on. left when I was five years old and Come signed on. his rights over and didn't want anything to do with me and my siblings. And I was so, I, it, something that I had never Stop. even didn't think about. Him. That's he didn't, you know, he wasn't in my life. So I'd never thought about it, but it was there. And yeah. it was something that the enemy was trying to keep to then stir up anger. And now I love that you shared that because I love that you shared that because if you're on here and you're learning deliverance, Hey, John trail, Hey, tortilla, you're learning um, stuff about deliverance as you're watching the broadcast. And one of the things that I love is something triggers you. Like if you have an abnormal emotion to a normal thing and it's, cycling over and over. It's a good sign. You really, you know, you need deliverance and I'm going to be teaching a, a introduction to deliverance soon um, just to, to help people understand areas that they need uh, deliverance. Yes, she will release the breaker for the abandonment in just a minute. But if you're on here and you're, you're, maybe you don't struggle with abandonment. I'm just, I'm just going over quick few signs. Like if you're struggling with other things, like somebody says something really simple to you and you get mad, you could have anger that you need to deal with or a wound of anger. Like she said, this affected her when she was like five. Yeah. And I love that he went for the root. Because people always try to cast spirits out, cast spirit out. And what I love to see is know what's the root? <laughs> what's the root behind all of it? And is there more than one root? So yeah. you describe, just like you said, when you ax the root and you don't, and it's gone and it's pulled out. And it's like the Lord's, bind, like the word says, he's binding up the wounds of your heart, the broken hearted, because the pure in heart will see God. Yes. And so he took that root out. And man, I bet your revelation of the father just said, whoop. <laughs> I just, that's how good he is. You it know, was, he yeah, loves in the come on. It's like, we don't even know it's there. And he yeah. pops us out. He loves us in the wholeness. Yeah. Let go of the root. And if you're on here and you haven't had the opera, a lot of people do not have opportunities to see deliverance ministers, ministers. And I declare that to change in Jesus name. And I am doing zoom deliverance and I know it's a, it's a wait. But there's so the need is so great. But if you're on here before she prays for abandonment, ask the Holy Spirit, just like like Holy Spirit took that root out of her. Just say, just say, Holy Spirit, what is the root in my life? Is there a root of rejection? Is there a root of stress? Is there a root of trauma? Is there multiple roots? And get alone with the Lord when we get off the broadcast and allow him to minister to you. Because, yes, um, deliverance ministers were needed. I love doing deliverance, but we also have to rely on the Holy Spirit. Another, another person on here says when I, my dad left when I was five and I dealt with that. Yeah. It's very common. What, what Joanne is sharing is very common. I dealt with that. God had to rip that root out of me. My dad divorced when I, my parents got divorced when I was six. And usually if there's been some type of divorce in the family, you have to deal with the root of abandonment. And it's usually shock and trauma. There's a bunch of things that go with that. Um, but it's de dealing with the memories you know, people, people, have, you have to let the Holy Spirit touch the memories, but um, I'm going to go ahead and let you pray, Joanne, and, and just see if there's any more questions. That, there's that a bitterness have. being held on to from oh, someone my. holding on to bitterness. And that is, that is a, a root of abandonment. Your bitterness that you are holding towards other people who have not even done anything towards you. Come on. It's a root of abandonment. Come on. And we break that okay, now. Yeah, in Jesus ahead, name. Yeah, come on. We rip up those roots, Father. Take them out. Yeah. Come on. Father, cover that spot that you're taking these roots out, Lord. Come on. Cover that spot with your peace, Father, and joy and love. I just see the Father's hand just pouring love into those broken pieces Thank that you. he's taking this stuff out of. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. I just feel his glory really heavy. We're just going to release his presence and honor what Holy Spirit's doing. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. I just declare the love of the Father's touching Kenneth right now. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. We just declare every any wounds from when his father left right now that you just ministered to his heart. Right now, just pull out any root systems that are not of you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just release the love of the Father, the breakthrough of the Father. Yeah, and a lot of times it's forgiven yourself. Did you ever have to do that, Joanne? Just forgiven yourself. A lot of kids like to blame themselves for their parents being divorced. And it's almost like an inner vow. Oh, you yeah. It's giving it's just, myself and letting go of mm-hmm. like the shame that I had mentioned earlier. Come it on. was, you know, Satan tries to put that that shame and those feelings on mm-hmm. on you making you think that it's your fault. And then it's when you realize that it's not your fault, it's, Oh, well, you don't have mom and dad there. Your dad doesn't love you. He's not there for you. And so mm-hmm. you, then you're shameful when you see someone else's family who is perfect. Come on. But. It's like real lie of the enemy, right? <laughs> he likes to come up with so many weird things. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for touching each and everybody under the sound. I just want to do a little bit of like um, whatever Holy Spirit shows us, like corporate deliverance for the people that are alive right now. I've done a corporate and inner healing and deliverance once, but I believe the Lord is opening up doors for more of that. But uh, I just feel led to break word curses off of people. Yes. And so, Lord, we just come together in unity. Lord, I just break, because I just kept seeing darts in somebody's back. And, you know, we just forgive, release, and bless. You know, I just feel like somebody was betrayed recently. And I just declare that that shock and trauma off your heart and off your cellular memory. Just let go of that betrayal right now. Just love them. Just release them. Just bless them right now. I just break every word, curse off everybody under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, and every power, every prayer that was not authorized by the Lord, prayed over you or your family. We just break it off right now. In the name of Jesus, I just feel see the Lord spoken is not aligned with God's word. Come on, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I just see the Lord pulling an arrow out of somebody's back. And a lot of times, I just feel like the Lord wants me to go here. When you go through a betrayal or something hard, go up higher. Just go up higher. Just, uh, yes, to even over Ella right now, since she shared it, Lord, just go up higher. Give her a new perspective. Give her grace. I declare it will not wound her heart. I just declare supernatural grace over her right now that she'll come up higher. And when we come up higher and we see God's perspective, then it's easier to let things go. Don't you, don't you agree, yes. Joanne? It's just easier yeah. when you get the Father's perspective of of why a lot of times hurt people hurt people. Just remember that. Hurt people hurt people. Yes, deliverance ministry is in the children's bread. I absolutely love that verse because deliverance is part of our identity as children of God. I love that um, deliverance is in the children's bread. John Eckert has a really good teaching on that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just reading some of the comments to make sure we didn't miss anything. Lord, I just thank you for your presence. We just wash over everybody. Lord, I just thank you for protection. I just declare protection over everybody traveling over this holiday season. I just feel led to pray that right now. Lord, I just uh, declare impartation to the people under the sound of our voice. Lord, I thank you for activations of healing, activations of the prophetic activations for creative miracles for deliverance right now right now that you just activate the gifts under the sound of our voice lord that uh, people won't be afraid to do deliverance i feel just come out of agreement with that (laughs) i don't know i just felt that for some reason just come out of of agreement you have kingdom authority your daughter your son and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. And I just declare that over everybody under the sound of our voice in unity with Joanne. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just we just thank you as Joanne shared that you're unlocking bloodlines. So you start giving people keys over their bloodlines. Whoa, dreams, visions, however the Lord speaks 
to you. Ask the Lord to reveal anything in your bloodline that needs to be dealt with. You know, we don't live in fear about it, but we also, like Joanne says, we be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Like there's times and seasons where she didn't have to deal with that stuff, but now God's bringing it up. So there's a grace on her life to deal with it right now. And the Lord's unlocking it. Thank you, Lord. I'll bless Jennifer. as She's at work, Lord. Just bless her. Give her favor, supernatural favor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just feel the glory really heavy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Joanne, you want to do some prophetic? You want to pick a yeah, name? I wanted to, yeah. to share something. This afternoon, um, the Lord had, uh, I was able to close my eyes for about 20 minutes. And um, he just, the whole, we had taken the, the, the arrow of, of words and things spoken of somebody out. He had shown me that in a dream and he was um, that he was healing that as he was pulling it out, the wound was closing, but as it was closing, it was being filled with his words and what he feels and how he sees you. And um, I had woken up from that and I could not remember what it was about for anything. I'm like, been there before. <laughs> Show me what it is. Holy spirit. That's what I pray. <laughs> yeah. Please remind me. Me. And so I'm, you know, praying and through the afternoon and I'm like, Lord, please, please remind me what, what it was. And he goes, I will, I will speak it tonight. I'll speak it tonight and I will remind you. And sure enough, he just said, but he just brought that right back about him taking the arrow out. And so that wound, whoever that was for, that wound is being healed and it is being filled with God's words, what he says about you, how loved you are, how powerful you are, what lives on the inside of you. You are powerful and you can stand against anyone or anything that is spoken against you. Yeah, I see labels. Yes. I believe you're referring to labels. So I see labels coming off. What Joanne is talking about is like labels that were put on you when you were a kid. Yes. Like some people like bullied or teachers or... Um, even ones you don't remember, I just declare that the labels to be ripped off, even the ones you, you don't remember off your cellular memory, Lord. And then Lord, sometimes you could just see a label. If you see a label on yourself, just rip it off. Sometimes you're here. However, God speaks to you the most. You can hear a label, just rip it off. There's so many ways God does deliverance. And I just love it. There's like, there's no formula. Yes. There's a lot of a different techniques you can use, but God can just like with Joanne, like it was no technique. God just ripped the root out of her yeah. and you just gave the word of knowledge for labels. So ask, like, as we're sharing this stuff, make it real to you this week. Just say, Holy spirit. Is there any labels that need to be ripped out of my life this week? And I promise you, if there's anything that God needs to deal with, he will open up and tell you. That's how I love about the love of the father. The love of the father cares about our heart. Oh man, he cares about our heart more than he cares about a platform, more than he cares about whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Uh, an office gift or a gifting of the Holy Spirit, whatever. It, it's our heart and making sure our hearts are whole and making sure because the pure in heart see God. And there's a process, like Joanne said, of purification. Yeah. Somebody said, I feel alignment than anything. Come on. Come on, alignment with the father. Somebody said, I felt invisible as a child. The enemy made you feel that way, but you yeah, weren't come invisible. On. Come the on. father was with you the entire time as a child. He, st he stood oh. right next to you and right before you, and you were not invisible. He saw you. The most important one saw you. Come on. I know a lot of people that have said that that said that they felt invisible as a child because their parents would say like kid, the old school thinking like kids were seen and not heard. Like their parents would say that to them. And so just ask the father to heal that wound. If it's still there, just come out of agreement with any rejection it could have caused and just say, go, we ask that root of rejection and just ask the Holy spirit to uh, comfort you. I, I just think there's so many layers. Deliverance is like an onion. And, and you know, you just say, like, man, I dealt with that one. Nope, you got to go deeper. <laughs> Isn't that how the Holy Spirit works? Yeah, he yeah. Just makes the, yeah, he brings to mind or something else that triggers you, or 
come or something, you know, that's bothering you. And that was uh, another thing. And I had thought of it. And then we, we ended up saying <laughs> rabbit trailing. <laughs> it was um, sleep paralysis. Come on. Whoever is dealing with sleep paralysis and like not narcolepsy? sleeping soundly. Yeah. I bind that spirit that is visiting, visiting you in the middle of the night. And I mm-hmm. cast it. The Lord tells us what we, what is bound on earth is bound in heaven. And what is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. And I bind that spirit in Jesus name. And I pray sweet sleep over you. Yeah. We'll break off any night terrors yes. right now. We just command that off right now. Any spirits of fear that could try to attack you in the night. We just break that off right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And that's one of the things I love to say is that as a leader, we openly should be sharing that I do deliverance. I do deliverance with Holy Spirit, with myself, with people like it should be practiced. Deliverance is a lifestyle. You know, I love Derek Prince. I just love him. If you watch any of his YouTube videos, if you're really interested in doing deliverance, watch his videos. But one of the things he said is you have to be desperate to be delivered. Yes. And you really do. You got to want all of it out and God will do it and he will make you whole. And even if you don't have a deliverance ministry in town, the Lord will direct you, whether it's through him, whether it's through Zoom, whether it's phone calls, different ministries offer different things. But like with Joanne, she didn't have access right then. She didn't even know she had a problem. And that's the way a lot of deliverance goes. We don't know we have a problem until the Lord pulls it out and he puts his thumb on it. He's like, you need to deal with that right there. And it's the power of repentance. Oh, Let's yeah. talk about that. Let me, I'm going to let you talk about that really quick because yes. repentance is, man, it's everything. <laughs> it's so sweet. It you is. know, repentance unlocks Come on. everything for the kingdom of God. Come everything <laughs> that we are seeking after is on the other side of repentance. Come your, on. Your freedom, your peace, on, everything man. is on the other side because we have to not only repent, we have to surrender it. Come on. Because we can repent for, I mean, repent means to turn around and do something different. You're going to make a 180. So that also comes in line with surrender. You are giving up what you once held on to and what you once did. And with that, when we surrender and repent for, for anything, I know my big my repentance now, I mean, I repent daily for myself, but is also, um, repenting for my family Come on, because it breaks the intercessory uh, technique. <laughs> come on. Yeah. I'm, intercession. Yeah. Come on. I'm breaking it away just enough for the Lord's angels to slip in and the yeah, Lord to do on. his work come that on. he needs to do. Yeah. If so, you ever upset at somebody repent for them, then yeah. you're having the heart of the father. Yes. You know, then it's truly, it's just, it's repentance gives you the heart of the father. I believe he, cause mercy triumphs over judgment, you know, and I know there's times where God will put his thumb on things that have to be, you know, dealt with in a certain way, but look, God loves, he still loves mercy when it can be given. That, that's, that's He's just so, part. He is so loving and so I know. <laughs> in his mercy and the grace that he has shown us. And that he graces us every single day to, to be a mom, to be a wife, to be a minister. It's every day he graces us. And we just have to have that, that mindset. And this goes along with being the, the stop being lukewarm and notice what the father has done for you and what he continues to do for you daily and see him move daily. Victory. Yeah, fight with some scriptures, declare the scriptures. Yes. Like with and he prepares a table before us in the present of presence of our enemies. Yep. And if you're noticing cycles in your family, the Lord keeps bringing this up. If you're noticing cycles in your family, get your face before the Holy Spirit, before God and say, God, where is this cycle coming from? And I promise you, God is faithful. And I, I mean, he could have somebody else speak it to you. He could give you a dream about it. Just don't look for the answer one way. But he is more concerned about your freedom. He loves you. You're a child. And God will honor that request. I, I, I really believe with my whole heart, anybody that truly wants deliverance, God will make a way. Yes. He'll make a way under the power of the Holy Spirit 
you know, I've heard testimonies yeah, where, where Jesus has walked in the room with people and done things like I've heard so many different testimonies from all over the place on the different ways deliverance come. That's why I wanted to sh- you to share your root. And if they're looking for encouragement too, I want to share about your ministry, like where they can follow you. You've got a daily and in- powerful word that you release on Instagram, but uh, yeah, share, share where they can get your book and and I love the daily encouragement. If you're not following or follow um, on Instagram, but I'll let you share your information. Uh, the book you can get, it's Where God Met Me, Redeemed from a Path of Failure. And it's available either on Amazon or on my website, which is bushelandabeck.com. And then um, all my social media sites are Bushel and a Beck. And we yeah. do share daily on all of them. Come on, come on. She'll really challenge you. It's like that sword. It's a sword of the Lord, just listening before the Holy Spirit and what he's releasing that day. A lot of people said there was a few people that responded to the sleep paralysis. I got that as a child. So if you had breakthrough in that area, just type in if you've had breakthrough in that area since you were a child, or if that's something you still just received that word that Joanne spoke about breaking any um, narcolepsy as well any curse of narcolepsy anywhere that came in in the bloodline we just cut the cord of the iniquity repent whoa we command it off the bloodline right now right now we just bless sleep sleep right now man the glory is just getting so heavy let's just release the glory for a second just let the the lord minister to you right now if you have a need and we haven't called it out just let the lord i just see the lord healing hearts right now just let the lord wash over you Wash over you. I just, I just re- break any any weariness off right now. Any weariness right now. Any heaviness. We just let the wind of God come. Wind of God's strength. 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 Just get in his presence. <laughs> his presence refreshes. So that's why I'm just releasing the presence. Lord, just let your glory that, that, that me and Joanne feel right now. Just let it wash in every room. It's under the sound of our voice. So just let it go into their houses just let it wash over their house thank you i see the lord healing migraines and the glory right now i just declare that migraines to go in jesus name thank you holy spirit whoa we just break any any generational curse of accidents any premature death or accidents cut the cord of that iniquity right now Right now, I just command it out of the bloodline. I forbid any premature death. I declare what the word says. With long life, God will satisfy you and show you his salvation. Thank you, Lord. With long life, God will satisfy you and show you his salvation. We just declare that breakthrough. I just see the Lord releasing breakthrough. Breakthrough in areas of finances, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You're to, you're just opening up finances. I just see business ideas, inventions. I just declare that over the people that are that are seeking, that are wanting the revelation. Lord, we just declare dreams that unlock breakthrough. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Anything else, Jane? I see you writing down there. <laughs> Make sure. I see him. Uh, he's covering s- s- homes, uh, mm. cream color homes with uh, oh. there's a couple of them with siding, a couple of them that are that are not not brick but stone. And he's covering. I just see the blood of Jesus just pouring down over these. Come homes. on, come on. Thank so that home matches any description, a cream color home, whether it be siding or, or brick or stone. He's, I just see the blood of Jesus just pouring down the outside walls of these Come homes. On. Thank you, Lord. Hedge of protection. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I review that on my using this is financial. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just declare uh, a grace over everybody under the sound of our voice for a season of prayer. I just see a season of prayer, like an intercessor anointing coming on some of you, and you'll notice a switch in that. Thank you, Lord. 
different nations doing deliverance. Woohoo, that's awesome. Give him more, Lord. Give him more. That's one of the things I like to tell people about deliverance. You have authority. What me and, and Joanne are doing right now, you can do it. You know, you're a son, you're a daughter. We've imparted to you. You can go pray for the sick. You can go release words of encouragement, prophetic words. Just, just step out. Take a risk. Take a risk. The Lord honors risk. He honors hunger. And there's a growth process. You know, just, just know that give yourself some grace and just allow yourself to grow. I think that's one of the good things that, Joanne, that you've done well. You give yourself a lot of grace to be able to walk out the process. The Lord's just showing me that. And I, I know that I uh, just declare that. I'll let you declare that over everybody that, that's under the sound of our voices. They just have a grace in their walk. You know, some people get impatient with their growth. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you speak into that for a minute. <laughs> I just release the grace that the Father, the all the grace that the Father has for us, that He pours it out like rain over you. His grace and mercy just pour out over you for anything that He's called you to do, anything that you're walking through right now. He has graced you. He has graced your family and your children. Your children are graced for what you're doing. And for, and for what they're, they've gone through or what your family's going through, your family is, is being shown Come on. an amazing amount of grace, but I, he's pouring it down. It's falling like rain on your family and your home. Come on, man. I can sense the glory building so heavy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to give a minute to, Continue to release the glory. So if anybody has any more needs on here, just let the Holy Spirit move. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I see the Lord um, putting pens in people's hands. If you felt called to write, this is a season to just to get in, in, in the secret place with God. I just see revelation. So I just see like a pen of fire, real, a real breaker anointing on writing. To just press in that. Press in and give him that time. Last mm -hmm. December, the Lord spoke to me two days after my birthday mm -hmm. and said that if I would take a pen and paper, not my computer, a pen and paper, <laughs> come on, and give him time every day, then he would help me write a book that would then be released. And my mother and sister would turn to him if I did that. Come on. And, wow. That is, and he wrote the book. I gave him the time and he did the, the entire book, the Where God Met Me Redeemed from a Path of Failure in 21 days. Wow, that's powerful. And Amen. 21 is the Lord's number of restoration. Come on. And that's exactly what he has caused in my family. He has, he has brought restoration through my entire family. Come on. Michelle said she's starting her second book. Amen. Kenneth, yes. somebody said, see your anointing to increase, just practice, 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 practice. If you want your see your anointing to increase, it comes by use because, you know, that's what the word says that, that your spiritual maturity comes by use to practice and train your spiritual to, and just to discern good and evil. Yeah. Or we just activate the gift of discerning of spirits for anybody under the sound of our voice in the name of Jesus. I thank you. Whoa. I just declare that they discern the heart and motives of men that they just see increase, increase, increase. Blunt said he's starting a fishing ministry, fishers of men and men who fish. Amen. I love that. Mm -hmm. Lord, bring him a harvest through it. Connect him with the right people. Draw him in. Yeah, we're just ministering before the Lord right now. We could keep going into the interview, but the anointing is so heavy. Me and Joanne are just seeing what the Father's doing and just just releasing whatever, whatever he gives us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for just touching everybody with your presence right now. Whoa. Right now. Hey, Flint, do you have any, like, uh, if you're still on here, do you have any like younger men? I just see a group of younger men coming in. I don't know what age group you have, but we just call them in. If you're not yet connected with the like young adults, and if, if you are already connected, we just bless it. We just bless what God's doing and just declare growth over it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Mm. Anything else, Joanne? Thank you, Lord. No? Okay. Well, I just want to make sure I honor Joanne's time. So I just want to tell you to go follow her at Joanne Beck and, and follow her on Instagram and uh, go, watch... Um, Watch the glory story next week. If you know anybody that needs a creative miracle in the brain, uh, I'm teaching how to fish the kids. Wow. That's a powerful harvest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we call in more, more kids, but uh, the glory is so heavy. It's hard to go. <laughs> it's like, I just want them to minister to y'all. Well, we just declare tonight. Yeah. And equipping them with free tackle. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. It's a powerful the kids are so, we just say, Lord, harvest their hearts. Give them deep revelation. That's so much fun. I just kept seeing young adults, young adults, young adults. Oh, thank you, Lord. I know I want to honor her time. I'm just seeing if the Holy Spirit gives us anything else before we get off of here. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. I just see major breakthrough in some lives and some households. Come on, household salvation. Yeah, household salvation. We just declare that in agreement right now. Whoa, under the blood of Jesus, that house that you are seeing and covered in the blood, it's household salvation. So just put a demand on that in the spirit and fight for it. Declare it. Just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for that household salvation coming to your house. Yes. Mission birthday parties. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a fresh wind. Lord, I just declare the winds of change to blow over everybody under the sound of our voice. Lord, I just feel the winds of change. I just ask, Lord, uh, that you break, that they break out. They break out of cycles. Lord, we command, declare, and decree every hidden cycle, every hidden um, bloodline thing they need to deal with to come to the come to light please pray for job interview lord we just declare a uh, favor over becky right now and unity we just declare lord that she will have a uh, supernatural wisdom and insight on how to answer these questions thank you jesus thank you lord the lord the this this year is not over yet and so if you've been praying for reconciliation and restoration in your family, this is the season and it is coming. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I just see the Lord even now just um, touching your ears. Lord, just do it like a, a prophetic act. Just put your hands on your ears. Let's just do this activation. I love this activation because that's one of the complaints I hear a lot. You probably do too, Joanne. It's, I'm trying to hear the voice of God. Well, he speaks in many ways. You're already hearing him. But uh, just put your hands over your ears and just say, Lord, I repent for any anything on my ear gates that was unholy, anything I've heard, any sounds. You can do that over anything. I'm just teaching you how to cleanse your gates. Just, just wash it with the blood of Jesus. Just declare over your ears. Just say, thank you, Lord. My ears are sensitive to you. You can do that over your eyes. You can do that over all your spiritual senses. Let me pray for any veil that has been over your on. ears or your Come eyes. On. Be torn down now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Thank you. I pray you're open to hear and see the Lord working and moving in your lives. And you hear his sweet, soft voice. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Lord. And I believe the glory, if you're on here and you can just sit and be alone with God for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I believe the glory is still going to be on you because you are a glory carrier. You are, you know, we are the temple of God and he fills us with his presence. He takes us through the process of transformation and the glory. So as we get off of here, just go sit with a paper and a pen. 
Just be alone with the Holy Spirit, be alone with the Father. And you know, he might not do deliverance. It could be like clinic clarity, he said. I just declare clarity over you. Just get alone with a pen and a piece of paper and, and God just may want to give you direction about something. He may want to show you an idea. Just whatever the Father wants to speak to you, is it's an easement in the glory because you won't be distracted and you'll just have clarity. We just declare that over you. The questions, Kenneth, I see you asking the Lord a lot of questions. I just declare the answers are coming forth. That as you go and sit in the glory, just write them down one after the next, after the next. Do you journal, Joanne? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to let you speak about that real quick. And then I promise I'll let you go. I'll let you speak about journaling because somebody needs to hear that. So I started when I started seeking the Lord and spending time in his word every day. And with the, the sermons and stuff that I was listening to, I would have my Bible, but then I would also have a notebook. And now I have a ton of <laughs> notebooks that are filled. <laughs> but if Come on. he would give me like a scripture would stick out mm -hmm. or I would get a word. And I, you want to make sure that you're always writing those things down Come because on that word might not be for that time that word could be for three years down the road Come and on. So to write down and journal everything that he's speaking to you or showing you is very very important and dreams yeah stewarding your dreams i'm a big dreamer do you dream a lot Joanne? Yeah. Yeah. so as a big dreamers you know you could have two or three dreams a night and sometimes you can't process all that at one time so you write them down and like uh it was a teaching i did i heard with john paul jackson he had a dream and 10 years later the lord reminded him of that dream that word was for 10 years later he went back to his notebook pulled out the dream and actually spared him a lot i think it was a lot of trouble or or something i don't remember every detail about it but it was a word for 10 years later i thought man that's powerful so journaling your what god's saying to you or your dreams and it's, and if you're a scribe if you have a scribal anointing as soon as you pick up the pen sometimes it's easier for you to hear god because you're just unlocking your natural gift so even if you haven't you know written before just start and i, I guarantee you god will meet you there all right well bless you guys everybody's saying thank you we love you guys thank you for tuning in tonight i want to honor joanne and and um thank her for being on the broadcast and if you know somebody with a needs to create a miracle in their brain next week's glory story specifically for creative miracles in the brain any cut any type we're going to have testimonies of different um, people being healed in that area or create a miracle taking place in that area so please share or just reach out if you can text the people and just let them know because i'm really believe that in faith that god is really i just knew it was a season for creating miracles for the brain thank you lord thank you lord love you love you guys too thank you so much <laughs> All right. I know the glory's so heavy. It's like, how do you even go? You just want to stay here and be with dad. But just go be with dad. Go go lean into him and start writing things down. I'll oh, bless you, Lisa, Michelle. Bless you, Cher. Bless you, Brent. And thank you, Joanne, for sharing your, your powerful story. And I just love what God is birthing in you and, yeah. and the cleansing and the bloodline he's doing for you and the stuff you're just impacting your bloodline so tremendously it's just awesome to see i can't wait to see where you're going to be at in six months to a year so make sure you follow her post you'll be encouraged and challenged and uh yeah thanks, thanks. for coming on <laughs> Me. and everybody that is another glory story for you so i would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get alone with god and ask him to help you cultivate his presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that god wants you to be a part of